Let's stop the blood sugar spikes during the exercise and drop after the exercise. Weird, huh? Well, I'm Dr. Ergen. I'm an endocrinologist, a diabetes specialist, and today I will teach you something important. Let's do it. So, why exercise spikes the blood sugar in diabetics to begin with? It may seem, seem counterintuitive, right? That physical activity, something we all know is good for us, could actually cause a rise in the blood sugar levels. But fear not, for we are here to explain why this happens and what you can do about it, right? So let's talk science. First and foremost, let's tackle this burning question. Why does it spike, right? Well, it all comes down to, again, your best and worst friend, insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas that helps regulate the blood sugar levels, right? Now, diabetics are either doesn't produce insulin or they cannot effectively use it because of insulin resistance or in majority of the time, it's a combination of both. This results in high blood sugar levels. So when it comes to other hormones that play with the insulin, it's sometimes like a tug of war. So imagine our body as a football field and our hormones as players. Intense exercise is like the start of a high stakes match. Our body pumps out the adrenaline, cortisol and glucagon. Let's call them our strikers to keep them crucial supply of glucose flowing to our muscle cells. That's what they want to do. This process is a bit like activating our body's internal gluconeogenesis, a fancy term which just means creating new glucose. Because when you're working out, you need glucose, right? Everybody knows that. However, in folks with diabetes, insulin, let's say our goalie, isn't quite up to the task. Instead of stopping the goals, or in this case, stopping the blood sugars level climbing too much, insulin is casually just strolling around the field and just while the adrenaline is sprinting. And insulin is like, uh, okay, you know, I'm all right, I'm done, I'm too old. And the result is often a spike in the blood sugar levels because insulin cannot match the other hormones in diabetics. So these are, we call them counter-insulin hormones, our over-enthusiastic strikers. Now, they calm down eventually, right? But hey, we are not leaving you stranded on the pitch. Stay tuned to find out what strategies we can use to get insulin back in the game and maintain blood sugar under control. So now we understand why exercise can lead to a spike in blood sugar levels, but what does this mean for diabetics. It's important to note that the spike is only temporary, usually occurs during or immediately after exercise, but for most people with diabetes, their blood sugar levels will return to normal within a few hours and sometimes, unfortunately, crash. You're like, what the hell? My blood sugars was like they were in the 250, now I'm down to 50. What's happening, dude? Well, we call this a hormonal tug of war. Now, imagine a scenario where our goalie, the insulin, gets a sudden burst of energy. You know, suddenly uh, gets a cup of coffee or something, or get a, some energy drink, a Red Bull or whatever, or who knows, maybe sneaking in some hormones, you know, like steroids and whatnot, you know, some of them do. Suppose you have poorly controlled diabetes or uh, using specific medications, in this case, like insulin or sulfonylurea. So, in response to exercise, your body might pump out an excessive amount of insulin. All of these other hormones, counter-insulin hormones, that are raising your blood sugar levels, right? You know, the insulin is basically trying to balance this galaxy of hormones rushing to your body. But here's the catch. Our strikers, the adrenaline and cortisol, sprint off the field quicker than insulin does. Meaning that they're gone, yeah, insulin is still walking but insulin is still in the field. And when insulin is left as the last man standing, that creates an imbalance that favors insulin's action. Think about it, you know. Suddenly all of your competitors are gone and you are dominating. Well, you are going to dominate. You're gonna do what you're gonna do. So 
as a result, if you have a lot of insulin in your system and the other hormones are out, now basically you're left with too much insulin in your body. That's why you're crashing. So that's what happens. That's the story. Now, this roller coaster of blood sugars can be quite dangerous, right? If left unchecked, a lot of people end up in the hospital. Now, you don't have to be sprinting or having a heavy exercise. I have patients coming to my office and the only time they have a low blood sugar episode is when they come to my office. I'm like giving free juices everywhere all day long. Well, I'm like, do you normally have low blood sugars? They're like, no. Well, today I have it. Well, the reason is normally they don't really move much. They're just sitting at home watching TV. And then the day they come to the doctor, they're in a panic, they're running around, they're trying to get things done, they probably miss their meal. And by the time get, they get to the office and they wait a little bit, no breakfast, no nothing or whatever. And the next thing you know, they're running low. Well, not the right thing to do, right? But that happens. So it doesn't have to be a heavy exercise, even a little bit of an exercise can put yourself into that situation of low blood sugar if you are not paying attention. Especially this is true for insulin takers. If you're on insulin, right, and you normally take this insulin, it balances you out. And the next thing you know, you're physically more active. And now your muscles are pulling that glucose. Your body is making more insulin because of the counter insulin hormones. And as a result, insulin is left and all the other hormones are gone. Your muscle pulled more blood sugar from your blood. As a result, you're left with nothing, especially if you didn't eat. So that's why it's very important to be vigilant and monitoring all the time. That's why we love the Dexcom and Freestyle Libre. Yes, they're not the most accurate, right? They are not the most accurate. That don't have to be accurate, believe me. They're telling you your whereabouts. They're like a forecast, you know. If they are saying that, you, they saying that your blood sugar is 90, but you're like 100, don't be heartbroken, right? If they tell you that you're 250, but you're like 220, well, you're still high, right? It's still telling you you're high. So don't hung up on those exact numbers. So follow what it says to trend. If you're high, it means you're high. If you're going down, it means you're going down. The exact numbers don't always matter. So like I said, if you're a diabetic on insulin or sulfonylurea, it is crucial that you keep a close eye on your blood sugar levels before, during, and indeed, after your workouts it can be up to 24 hours can you believe that the exercise you do right now can affect you up to 24 hours think of this as your personal half time report check it out where you're at with your blood sugars it will help you to understand and manage that intricate game of hormones playing inside your body so stay tuned as we dive into more strategies to help you keep your insulin your blood sugar levels playing nicely in a very collegial manner. Now, prevention is the key, right? So now we understand the science behind the spike in blood sugar levels during the exercise and the potential risks for diabetics. Let's talk about prevention. The key is to find a balance between managing the blood sugar levels and staying physically active. So some people totally misunderstand me. They'll say, Oh, doctor said your blood sugar can drop after exercise. I think uh, I was exercising twice a week. I think I will not exercise anymore. <laughs> so that's not what I'm saying, right? So before engaging in any physical activity, it is important for diabetics to check their blood sugar levels, right? Especially for people on insulin or sulfonylurea. If your blood sugar is too high to begin with, let's say you're a type 1 diabetic and your blood sugar is over 250 milligram per deciliter. It is best to wait until that blood sugar return to a safer range before exercise. Because think about it, you're a basketball player, you're a 15 year old teenager, you're gonna go from 250 to 400 while you're playing. That's not what you want. On the other hand, if your levels are too low, such as below 70, well, it's better to have a snack or glucose tablets because not always your blood sugar will spike. You may not be very active. You may just be just walking a little bit before you even start exercise. And next thing you know, you're low already before you started exercise. So it is really important for diabetics to communicate with their healthcare team about their exercise routine. And don't keep changing it. Just find a routine and stick to it. That's the key. Now, when people tell me that they're going to go into do some exercise or whatnot, we review their medications. We make sure that we personalize their recommendations 
to avoid a crash, especially for insulin takers. Let's talk more about the continuous glucose monitoring systems. All right, nobody wants to carry a piece of device on them. You know, it's kind of stigmatizing and whatnot, but believe me, it is a game-changing technology in the world of diabetes management. We call it continuous glucose monitoring because it checks your blood sugar every one to five minutes, depending on what device you use. Just think of it as your reliable friend that keeps you updated about every move in that game. A CGM is a wearable device that tracks your blood sugar throughout the day and night. It will give you real-time updates and trending data. It's not measuring your blood sugar, it's measuring your tissue level. So it's not the same as your finger stick, so don't expect that. They will be close, but not the same. With the CGM by your side, you can really monitor how exercise impact your blood sugar levels, how everything else actually can impact your blood sugar levels. Before meals, after meals, how the medications do, etc. You can have a lot of data with it. So whether our goalie, the insulin in this case, strolling around the field, or our strikers like adrenaline or cortisol, they're sprinting. A CGM has always your back. It's like having a personal referee that keeps an eye on the game, ensuring no foul play in your blood sugar levels. It is truly a lifesaver for those complex, unpredictable matches, just the kind of backup you need when you're living with diabetes and staying active so yeah stay active stay healthy despite the potential challenges it's crucial for diabetics to stay physically active for overall health and well-being exercise can help improve not only blood sugar control but also reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke improve your mood and energy levels reduce the risk of blood clots in your legs so don't let the fear of a spike in your blood sugar levels deter you from staying active with proper precautions we discussed and communications with your healthcare team, you can safely incorporate exercise into your daily routine. And also remember, a little spike in blood sugar is a small price to pay for the countless benefits of exercise. So, stay active, stay healthy, and keep moving forward. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Remember to subscribe and share this video, and remember to visit sugarmds.com. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.